basically, it's time to do some editing. <laughs> Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's time for another tutorial from your boy, Pinnacle Studio Pro. All right, everybody knows that Pinnacle Studio 17 is one of the easiest to use video editing programs out on the market today. You can use it for home movies, documentaries, short films, anything you want, all right? But before you get started, you gotta know the video editing basics. I'm here to give it to you, all right? I'm gonna make it simple for you to understand just how to get down to the basics and edit your movies with precision, baby. Let's get into it. Here we are at Pinnacle Studio 17. Now, before we even start editing, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set up our project, all right? Setting up your project basically tells Pinnacle Studio 17 what you're gonna be doing and what type of video clips and media you're gonna be using. Now you want to set this up because if you don't and you use a wrong type of video format, your project's going to be jacked up. All right, so let's get started. First, you want to go to setup. Then you want to go to control panel. And when the control panel opens up, you want to go down to project settings. Now there's all type of defaults you can set up and things like that. But what we want to focus on is a new movie project format. And when you click on this little carrot here, the little drop down, you see there are a lot of different profiles that you can utilize for your project. All right, 2D, 3D, uh, progressive, uh, interlace, all type of stuff. Now, you can go with the uh, NTSC widescreen if you know you're going to be doing 16 by 9, or you can go with any type of format you really want. I'm going to roll with the NTSC widescreen this time. And I'm going to click on OK. Now, let's check out the edit tab and go ahead and get our video editing thing on. Now, the big thing that stands out in this view are the library window, the timeline, and the preview window. The library window shows the media that's in the locations that you selected on your hard drive. If you go to the navigation bar here, you get to select from the watch folders on the hard drive that you have set up to pick videos to show up in the library. The preview window plays a preview of the source footage selected in the library or the media footage in the timeline based on which footage you select. So if I select one of these bad boys here in the media library, now you see it's on source right now. And if I hit play, it'll play that. Lovely. Now, if I drag one of these down into the timeline, and I press play, it'll play this, the video that I have in the timeline. And I can still click on something in the media library, and boom, play that from the preview window as well. Preview windows doing big things for people all over the world. Now, the timeline track is where all the magic happens. This is where you send your media that you want to add to the video. You can drag media or video clips down into any available track of the timeline by selecting it with a left click, holding down the mouse, and dragging it where you want it to be. You go where I tell you to go. You go on the track, I tell you, and you move where I tell you to move, baby. All right, let's go ahead and drag a video clip down into the timeline. Now, when you add a video clip or photo to the timeline, Pinnacle Studio renders the video. The rendering process is displayed by the green monster. It's like this green and beige line. Now, we're not talking about Fenway Park, but you will see the green line above the timeline track. Once the green line disappears, like your credit line at Christmas time, the rendering process is complete. Rendering smooths out the playback of your video preview without dropping frames and looking all choppy like it was sliced and diced by Chef Ramsay. Now, 
if the clip that you bring down has video and audio you will see that you will have a waveform of the audio near the bottom of the clip any media that you add to the timeline gets a fresh green check mark right above it to tell you that you've already used the media in your video thanks for letting me know pinnacle studio 17 thanks for letting me know Pinnacle Studio 17 is smart, right? May not be a rocket scientist, but it's pretty gosh darn smart. Now, the reason why I say that is because if you choose a video of a different frame rate or a different file format, and you drop it down into the video timeline, which I'm going to do with this AVI track. This AVI track actually has a 15 frames per second. So I'm going to drag this down. Everything else is a... Is a MP4 or MOV H.264 file with uh, 29.97 frames per second so when I drop this down it automatically puts some little black bars on the side so that the video will keep its perspective because if you don't I mean I can stretch this out and it'll fill in the box if I wanted to but then the video would be all jacked up and real ugly and stretchy so Pinnacle Studio actually allows you to mix and match formats and frame rates within the video one of the best things about Pinnacle Studio 17 Ultimate is that it has unlimited tracks. Now you can add tracks to the timeline by clicking on the track, right clicking it, selecting insert new track and select whether you want to add a track above or below the track that you're currently on. Boom, got it done. You can also go ahead and delete this track by right clicking on it. All right. Also you can add a track by selecting the track and then just go to the add new track button. When you do that, it's going to automatically add a track to the top of everything. It really don't, doesn't matter where you're at or whatever. It's going to add it to the top of everything. Now, tracks are visible in Pinnacle Studio from the top to the bottom. This means that anything you place in the top track is overlaid and viewable over the tracks below it. To make sure that video is visible, you got to make sure that it has nothing directly above it or the item above it has some type of transparency to it. Now, Check this out. I'm going to go ahead and throw this one right underneath this one. And what will happen is we'll only be able to see the top video until I get past this point. Now I can see the bottom one. But if I wanted to see both, I could just add some transparency. I can left click right here when I see the little uh, carrot and the arrow and drag this. And now guess what? That added a fade so it has transparency. So now that it renders render on baby you'll be able to see both videos do this beautiful huh I love it freaking love it now while I'm on the subject of fades I might as well give you a little taste of how to do some simple transitions so let's go ahead and move this back over here just undo some of these things real quick. All right. Now, if you have two videos next to each other, like these two that you got right here, there are a few ways that you can bust out some simple transitions. You can create a dissolve transition by placing your cursor on the top corner of a video, holding down the left mouse, just dragging it. Now, you'll see the video to the right gets a little bit shorter. That's because some of it is going to be dissolved into this one so that when you play it, you actually see both videos kind of dissolve together and then it just fades into the new one so that's pretty pretty isn't it pretty pretty now you can also drag the corners of two clips so if I drag this corner it's gonna say give me back that All right. and instead of doing a dissolve what this is gonna do now is it's just gonna fade to black and then the next one's gonna fade from black back to the video so let's go ahead and get that a look Fades to black, and then goes from black to the next video. So those are two real simple, easy transitions that you can do. If you're looking to get all fanciful and stuff, you can use one of the multiple transitions in Pinnacle Studio by selecting it from the media library and dragging it to the end of the clip. So let's go ahead and get rid of these little fades that we made first. Alright, let's go ahead to the transitions here. 
And I'm going to drag this little page curl down here to one of these right here. Let's drop it there. And now, as you can see, we got a nice little page curl transition going on. Like that. Now, once you got it here, you can just drag it to the desired length. You can make it longer, shorter, you know, make it how you want it to be, all right? You can double-click on a clip of the transition to go ahead and open up some of the settings. You can go ahead and reverse it, change the duration, all that good jazz. And you can double-click on a clip of the transition to open the media editor to make more precise adjustments. So let's double-click on this bad boy. And now that I'm in the media editor, I'm going to click on transition out because this is the transition out for this clip. It was at the end of this clip. So if I click on transition out, you can now see that I actually can adjust the transition. If I move this forward, you can see it's a little page curl transition that we were talking about. All right. Now, a few things I could do. I could change the preset default. All right. I can go ahead and change some of the parameters here, which in the settings. I can also go ahead and change the transition by going to some of these different transitions up here, selecting a different one, and I can go ahead and do that as well. If I want to change up the transition, we'll see how it looks in the preview, which I'm not going to do that. Or I could just go ahead and drag the little pill here on the ruler and change the length of the transition, making it longer or shorter as I like it to be, all right? Because this is my video, okay? Mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And you can see that it went ahead and made the adjustments to the transition, made it a little bit longer. And then I can go ahead and play this back by either hitting the space bar, or I can go ahead and play it back by clicking on the play button underneath the preview, or I could just go ahead and scrub it by left click in the mouse holding it down and moving the playhead across the video clip to scrub it and see how it looks the pinnacle studio 17 also allows you to overlay text over your video so let's go ahead and open up another timeline track here insert new track above the reason why we're doing that is because remember it sees from the top down so i have to have an open track up here to add a title or else you're not going to see it it's going to be freaking invisible it's going to be behind the video all right yeah, now that I got my playhead where I want it to be, I'm going to click on the create title button. And I'm going to make sure that this track is selected first. If I click on create title, then booyaka, it will open up the title editor. Now you see it says here, your text here. You can go ahead and go to the settings and change your text however you wish to do so. You know, just make it your own, of course. I'm just going to hit OK. And as you can see, after this finishes rendering, we have our text overlaid over the video, all right? Now, the text, of course, had a transparent background, so you can see beneath it through to the video below. Now, one of the other great things about Pinnacle Studio 17 is flexibility and the ability to customize things how you want it to be. Because as we all know, in the world of the consumers, it's all about you. Anyway. You can switch between storyboard and timeline view with the navigator button. Just click on it and then go to storyboard and you're there. All right. You can select which track you want to show in the storyboard mode by just clicking on the little buttons here on the side and it'll switch it to that timeline track. Now, once you're in here, you can drag these video clips all over the place and change up the order however you want them to look and you're done. Once you're done, all you got to do, change it back to your timeline mode, and you're good to go. You can use the ruler below to go ahead and stretch out your timeline so you can see things frame by frame. This is great when you're trying to do precise editing of a video because you can get down to each specific frame and make any adjustments you need to make. You can also use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to get your zoom, 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 and a boom, boom on at all times. You can navigate the timeline using the home and end keys on your keyboard. You can hit the home key to go to the beginning of the video, and then you can hit the end key to go to the end of the video. You can also use your go to start button underneath the preview window to go to the start of the video, and you can use the go to end button to go to the end of the video. You can also use page up or page down to go between scenes, clips, or segments of your video. So if you hit page up, you go backwards. If 
you hit page down you go forwards and closer to the end of the video you can also use the buttons jump backwards or jump forwards to move your playhead accordingly great thing about it too is that you can lasso round up stuff all right you can move multiple clips at once all you got to do is left click on a space in any timeline track that does not have anything in it where you want to start dragging all the clips so let's say i wanted these three clips to move by themselves and i wanted these three to stay where they were i can left click and lasso all of these clips with this little white box i can let go of the mouse now if i left click any one of these three i can move them together in tandem simultaneously wherever i want to move them to now let's get to cutting splitting trimming and editing some video you can split a video clip by placing a playhead on a specific part of the video bam and clicking the razor when you do this the entire clip gets an annoying orange thing going on around it then if you click on either part of the split clip the part you click on has the orange highlight, which means that's the part that you have selected. You could delete it by pressing a delete icon, or you could press the delete key on your keyboard, or you could just right click on it and say delete. Plenty of ways to get rid of stuff, okay? Now, if you decide that you don't like what you did and you want to change that, undo that, just click on the undo button. And bam, it comes back. If you click on it again, it'll get rid of the split. So there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this split back and go ahead and remove that again by clicking on the forward button or redo button. Now, you also have some other options here. You can actually do some trimming automatically on the fly. So if I place my cursor here where it has a little vertical line and an arrow and i hold my left mouse down i can trim this back out or trim it in do whatever i want to with it you can also click on the trim button right here on the toolbar and use the frame advance buttons under the preview to trim by frames what that's gonna do is gonna make your trimming and editing super precise now, while we're up in here in this, you know, preview section, let's get to talking about the dual mode button for a second here. So, right now, I'm going to go ahead and get out of this trim mode real quick. I'm going to bring up some footage. The dual preview mode is great. Now, why is it great? Because I say so. No, it's great because you can use it when you're trimming videos, and it helps you out because you get to view a timeline clip and a source clip from the library simultaneously. Now, this way, when you drag the video clip from the source into the timeline, you know exactly where the trim video will transition to the source video. <sighs> Editing bliss. All right, people, you did it. You passed Video Editing Basics 101, all right? Now, get into the software and play around with it a little bit, all right? Because the best way to learn how to edit video is to practice, practice, practice. So, I urge you, jump in the software, play around with it a little bit, stop playing couch potato, and watch it break it bad all the time. All right, guys, you know what's up. If you want to check out all of my Pinnacle Studio tips, tricks, special effects, reviews, etc., etc., etc. You got to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro on YouTube. That's right, Pinnacle Studio Pro. So, check me out on YouTube, hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, hit me up all over the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.